Greetings and welcome to What's Hot with Sea of Tranquility. I am your host, Pete Pardo, CEO and publisher of SOT. Today is Wednesday, March the 23rd. Spring is upon us here in the uh, eastern seaboard of the United States. And uh, with the warmer weather coming in, lots of great new music coming in as well. So we've got today a bunch of new releases in the uh, genres of pro progressive rock, all forms of heavy metal, jazz fusion, Classic rock, hard rock, you know, here we kind of do it all, so uh, we're just going to continue on. we got some new releases as well as some uh, cool reissues that have come out, so we're going to dive right into this. We're going to start off our kind of uh, featured CD of the week. is the latest from Progressive Metal Act Redemption. is called The Art of Loss. That's it right there. Got it on in the background. So, you know, most of you know this is the uh, band started up by guitarist, keyboard player Nick Van Dyke. Uh, also, Ray Alder, vocalist from It's Warning, on board as well. And these guys, you know, have been very kind of quietly just putting out some fantastic releases over the last decade. In fact, my personal opinion, I much prefer the uh, albums from Redemption than I do any of the more recent Fate's Warning output. Not that the Fate's Warning stuff is bad, mind you, but, you know, these guys have been just one of the, like I said, quietly one of the steadiest... <clears throat> excuse me, most consistent uh, prog metal bands on the scene. This latest is uh, is no exception. You know, they've been away for a couple of years. You know, Nick Van Dyke was battling a little bout of cancer. He seems to have gotten past that. Um, you know, they've uh, kind of regrouped here once again. Fantastic album. It's melodic. It's catchy. It's challenging. You know, uh, you know Bernie Versailles, their um, second guitar player, uh, had an aneurysm about two years ago, so he was not able to take part in this album. Unfortunately, he's still recovering, but they had some guest help on lead guitar solos from ex-Megadeth uh, members Chris Poland, Marty Friedman, a few other guys. So there's some sizzling lead guitar work on here. Just great riffs. Uh, Ray's vocals are stupendous. Let's just grab a quick little blast of this, why don't we? Yeah, as you can hear, the melodies are, are there. I mean, song after song is just really memorable stuff. It's some great guitar work, great keyboards. Uh, you know, these guys never went for they were going to shred till you die type of thing and, you know, just hit you over the head with all this crazy playing. There's plenty of that, but not, you know, you're not going to hear as much as you might on, say, a, a really complex street theater album. But I really dig it. want to highlight one little thing, uh, or a couple things, actually. The, the closing tune at day's end is like 22 minutes, I believe. Really, really good. A epic prog statement, if ever there was one. And they also do a fantastic cover of uh, the Who classic Love, Rain, or Me um, with guest vocals from John Bush from Armored Saint, also of X of Anthrax, uh, which is just absolutely fantastic. Probably, you know, it's one of those songs that, you know, other than Hart playing it live uh, quite a bit in recent years, which they do really, really well, um, this is like the first time that I can recall hearing an actual uh, studio cover version of uh, Love, Rain, or Me, and it's fantastic. Uh, John Bush is like, he's one of the best vocalists going out there today, and he shows you why on this tune, right alongside Ray Alder. It's, it's quite good. So if you haven't already gotten it, <clears throat> latest from Redemption, I highly, highly, highly recommend it. Uh, it's going to easily be in the top, 20 or, top 10 or so uh, for me this year, I'm sure, by year's end. Quite good. Now we're going to skip over to Australia uh, for a band that's been kind of popping around in various incarnations over the last oh, decade or so, uh, kind of doing the 70s hard rock slash stoner thing. Uh, they look like they might have been left for dead a couple of years ago, but uh, their leader, guitar player, vocalist has kind of resurrected them once again under the <coughs> Wolf Mother, sorry, <coughs> something going off the throat this morning, under the Wolf Mother banner, Victorious, latest. I mean, look at that artwork. It looks like a Wolf Mother album. You know, a lot of fun. Uh, it's just catchy, 70s style hard rock. There's, you know, some really great heavy riffs on here. I like this. Uh, some extra Hammond organ work on this album, which is really kind of cool. And just the grooves are there. There's a couple kind of more catchy pop sort of tunes. But for the most part, it's a lot of really good, you know, groove-laden, heavy rock. Lots of, you know, stonerific guitar riffs and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, if you love Wolf Mother, again, it's probably one of those bands you either love or hate. You know, he's got the high-pitched vocals, um, you know, the, the catchy melodies, but, you know, there's really great, like, metal riffs and, and you know, stoner slash doom riffs and whatnot. 
it's a lot of fun. I mean, you know, love it or hate it, uh, it's a Wolf Mother album. I kind of dig these guys, so uh, I was pretty happy to get a hold of this. So check that one, Victorious. And uh, the uh, title track is also the lead off single, which is uh, pretty damn infectious. Now we're going to go to a uh, another band from Australia, by the way, of Britain, or vice versa, something like that. They are Destroyer 666. Wildfire is their latest. Uh, wow. You know, this has one, been one of those bands. Uh, I've got a, a, a good friend who, uh, this is his favorite band. He just raves about these guys all the time. And I've heard a bit of their stuff over the years. Always kind of liked them. But uh, this is just bludgingly good. You know, they've got kind of a style all their own. There's bits of, like, kind of classic metal, you know, going back to the new wave of British heavy metal days. But... A lot of thrash going on here, bits of black metal, bits of death metal, bits of good old-fashioned rock and roll, all kind of melded together. You know, the vocals are kind of kind of blackened brass mixed with a little bit of that thrashy growl. The guitar riffs are shred. I mean, there's like shredding guitar work on here. Uh, I mean, at times it's quite thrashy. At times you got the kind of tremolo pick black metal stuff going on. There's like shredding guitar solos on here that you would have expected from like a uh, shrapnel album, you know, from the mid late '80s. And the songs are just real. I mean, the songs have a lot of groove, but they're heavy. They're pummeling. I mean, I mean, this album is brutal, but yet it's polished and it's sophisticated. Uh, but yet it's it's quite extreme. So you know, I don't, not there's really no other band that sounds like these guys. And most of all, the songs are a lot of fun. They're instantly memorable. You know, this is going to be, for a lot of people uh, who are fans of extreme metal, this is going to be sitting at the top of their list uh, at the end of the year of some of the most satisfying albums that have come out this year. I really dig this a lot. <clears throat> you, know, you know, look at the guys on the back. I mean, you know, they're not, they're not kidding around here. And, uh, you know, bits of Motorhead in there as well at times. So it's just, it's just a really, really cool, fun heavy metal album that crosses kind of a bunch of different genres but like ties them all together so wildfire by destroyer 666 seek it out at all costs all right so now we're going to we're going to go over to norway all right so this is a fairly new man called bridgeville aftershock it contains a couple of uh all the members are in other bands that probably some of you might have heard about uh you know humbucker is one of them uh absence another so but anyway this is a throwback to the 80s hard rock of the 80s so if you loved like uh, kind of that early period Bon Jovi, uh, maybe uh, first first Skid Row album or two uh, with Sebastian Bach, uh, little bits of like White Snake from the uh, 1987 album as well as Slip of the Tongue, and uh, you know I think you kind of get the get the point. So it's that kind of 80s arena rock. I wouldn't call this hair metal. <clears throat> it's just good old fashioned melodic rock, melodic rock. Um, lots of pretty cool guitar riffs. The vocals are outstanding. The melodies are outstanding. I almost wish there there was a little more. Could have used a little more lead guitar work. I think I think they could have upped the guitar element just a tad. But you know most of the songs are fairly rocking. Uh, it's not too heavy, not too many ballads, but there are a few of them. Vocals are like I said outstanding. Melodies are really catchy. You know if this had been released in '87 or '88, you'd be hearing a lot about these guys. So uh, you know Bridgeville, Aftershock, it's on uh, Prime Records. Good stuff if you like if you like '80s kind of hard rock. We're going to stay in Norway. So we're going to go back. Well, we're not going back. We're staying in the present. But turn back the tables, turn back the clocks to the early 70s. There was a band out of Norway called Aunt Mary who kind of bridged the gap between that kind of early, I don't even want to call it doom, but that early heavy rock sound, you know, Deep Purple, Sabbath, Humble Pie, Grand Funk, Zeppelin, all that type of stuff, with, uh, you know, the early prog rock movement. Uh, the band was called Aunt Mary. They released a, a few albums in the 70s and then kind of disbanded. Got back together a couple years ago with uh, a few members of the original lineup. Um, started working on new material, and then two of those members unfortunately passed away. So now their guitarist is the only one still left standing, but he's kind of finished up the record. Um, with some new folks, so he's kind of assembled a new version of the band. Uh, the album is called New Dawn. That's it right there. You know, a lot of the prog elements of the 70s, of the Aunt Mary uh, 70s band, have kind of slipped by the wayside, so it's more of like a kind of a bluesy hard rock album. Not surprising, a lot of those bands from the 70s, when they kind of do come back um, and reform in present time, that's kind of the route they go. But, you know, there's still some really cool, like, Hammond organ work, uh, 
uh, a lot of great bluesy hard rock riffs and uh, strong vocals. I dig it. You know, if you like purple, you know, Deep Purple and, you know, some bands like that, uh, I think you'll like this. And, uh, you know, it's, there's a little look inside, though. It's a little digipack thing here. Uh, I like it. You know, uh, if, if you, you know, for many, Aunt Mary, what the hell is that? Uh, you know, so if you were one of those who kind of uh, were into the rarities from the 70s and followed this band, I have a couple of their uh, CDs from, from back in the golden era. Uh, I actually kind of dig this. This is good. You know, nothing ground make great, uh, groundbreaking, of course, but uh, with a slight nod to their sound of the past, but with a more modern kind of, of bluesy hard rock uh, slant. Aunt Mary's back, folks. So remember the name. Check them out. Check this out. If you've never checked them out, check this out. You know how it goes. All right, so we're going to go. we got some cool reissues to talk about. So we, we talked about before when we were discussing Destroyer 666, that famous era of the new wave of British heavy metal, right? So the late 70s, early 80s, we had all these bands coming out of Britain that were just uh, kind of doing a new thing, starting up a new wave, um, just as the, only the Brits could do, classic metal, melodic, um, and, and it was popping up all over the place. So out of that scene, we've got some legendary acts like, you know, Def Leppard and Saxon and Venom to an extent, and I don't know if Motorhead kind of fit in there, but, you know, Iron Maiden, you know, Tigers of Pantang, Satan, Diamond Head, the list goes on and on. So, I mentioned Tigers of Pantang, so... This, this is actually, you know, so they released a couple albums in the early 80s with uh, a very, very young John Sykes on lead guitar, who then went on to be even greater fame with Thin Lizzy, and then, of course, White Snake, Blue Murder, and so on and so forth. Uh, sometimes, like, the music of, or the name Tigers of Mantang is more associated with John Sykes than actually their own music, but they're actually a very, very good band. And uh, they've continued to kind of carry on, you know, with only one original member, and this is actually a reissue of their 2012, I believe, and no, that's actually 2003. It's called Noises from the Cat House, okay? This is from our friends over at Angel Air Records, and... You know, still very, very solid. Again, one original member, new cast of characters, still very good. Kind of melodic hard rock, little bits of metal, great guitar work, vocals are solid, tunes are solid. I really dig this a lot. If you kind of followed Tigers back in the day and then forgot about them, don't forget about them anymore. Rediscover them. This is quite good. I like this a lot. This is actually, for me, the first time I've actually listened to any newish material from them in quite a long time. So uh, I was pretty surprised. It's good. Um, again, melodic. Heavy in spots, great guitar work. You know, what more can you want? So investigate that. It's on Angel Air Records. You know, those guys, we love them. They put out a lot of great stuff. So now, uh, another very important band in the new wave of British heavy metal movement was a band called Demon, who burst on the scene in, uh, in 1981. Their first album came out in 1982. Uh, that first album was called Night of the Demon. All right. Now, you know, taking a quick look at that, you know, it's a pretty ominous looking cover, you know, so, and if you look at, you know, a lot of the song titles, you would think, hmm, kind of satanic, these guys are probably pretty evil sounding, let me go check them out, and you know, what happened is a lot of people went and bought this album, and they were expecting something really, really evil, punishing and heavy, and it really isn't, other than some of the lyrical content, you know, these guys were kind of portraying themselves as something they really weren't, and when you got down to it, what you had here was a very, very good hard rock album, okay? Uh, I can compare these some of these songs, or many of these songs, actually, to, like, Def Leppard's first two albums, Onto the Night and High and Dry. If you like that, um, you'll love this, you know? And I think some of those folks who kind of dismissed this album back in the day should rediscover it, because it's actually really, really good. It's some killer guitar work on here, and the songs are just instantly memorable. It's a really, really good hard rock record. And for those of you who back in the day took one look at this and were like, oh, evil, I'm staying away from this. You know, I can't listen to Venom and all that other, you know, Celtic Frost and Slayer and all that other stuff. This is probably just like it. It's not. Go rediscover it. This is great. So that was 1982. In 83, they came out with The Unexpected Guest. Again, these are these are out in these kind of cool Japanese uh, mini LP sleeves type things, uh, reissues from the Rare Records. And uh, The Unexpected Guest kind of carries along the same lines Perhaps getting a little more melodic. So what happened with Demon over the, the couple of years after the debut 
is they started to incorporate keyboards and lots more melodies, and they became more of kind of like almost like a prog rock act with bits of like AOR, like melodic rock. So, you know, a bit different from the first album or two, but these are both very, very good. I would say this is the stronger of the two, but they're both really, really solid. Um, you know, so if you haven't discovered Demon, uh, especially back in their initial phase, go out and rediscover these two. They're well worth it. And then, you know, we fast forward to uh, 2012, and they actually released this album, Unbroken. Again, they've had lots of line of changes. They had some deaths in the family, all that kind of stuff. So, but, uh, you know, still that classic Demon sound. I think they uh, kind of went back to their heavy rock style on this album. It's quite, quite good. Uh, Dave Hill, lead vocalist, still at the helm. And, uh, you know, this kind of, uh, they decided to re-release this here in 2016. For those of you who missed it, back in 2012. So, uh, again, highly recommend it. Band called Demon. So we come to the end of the show, and our last segment of the day, as always, is Forgotten Favorites. So today we're going to go back to 1994. An album from a band, it's a debut album from a band who has become quite beloved over the years. They've kind of morphed their style a bit. Uh, I shouldn't say a bit. They're a very different band than they were back in 1994. Uh, I am talking about Sweden's Opeth, and this is Orchid, their debut. You know, when they burst on the scene back in the mid-90s, uh, the world kind of hadn't heard anything like Opeth before. So here you had this death metal band who were incorporating elements of progressive rock and folk, uh, which you know the genre really had never heard before. And they would go on to kind of, you know, hone that style over the next decade or so with some stunning releases like, you know, Morning Rise and My Arms, Your Hearse, and of course the seminal Blackwater Park, and you know the rest of the story. I mean, they've got so many great, great albums. And then a few years back, they kind of decided that, you know what, it's time for us to completely become a prog rock band and just kind of forego all the death metal. And that's kind of where they're at today. Still great but certainly very different. Uh, on this, this is a very raw album. You know, they became more polished over the years, but, you know, with classic tunes like In Mist, She Was Standing, Under the Weeping Moon, you know, Forest of October, The Twilight is My Robe, Requiem, The Apostle in Triumph, you know, just epic, dense death metal with layers and layers of folk and progressive rock. Uh, you know, Michael Ackerfeldt. Death Metal Growls still to this day are some of my favorites of the genre. Killer twin guitar playing, amazing, delicate, and melodic acoustic strumming. Uh, Ackerfeldt's melodic clean vocals are stunning as well. He kind of mixes those in throughout. It's just a really epic, epic album. Although, you know, like I said, it is quite raw. This was their first. They were still kind of discovering their way, but I really like this album a lot. I always have. Uh, as well as all the rest of the Opeth catalog, you know, and it, it, it's just, it's been kind of cool to watch them over the years kind of grow into the band that they are now. I mean, that hasn't really made a lot of the, uh, the death metal aficionados happy. I think some of the, uh, you know, the death metal fans have kind of walked away from the band in recent years, but they've opened themselves up to a whole new audience of, uh, you know, the progressive rock faithful who maybe didn't like the death metal aspect of their, of their music. So, forgotten favorite from today, or today, or this week, 1994's Orchid by Open. With that, I'm going to leave you till next time. Be safe. Be merry. Be joyous. Forget about all the crap that's going on in the world because there's a lot of it going on right now. Uh, enjoy music. Music is life. Music will help rescue you from everything else that's going on in your life. Trust me, it's done it for me for 40 some odd years. Uh, so once again, this is Pete Pardo with What's Hot with Sea of Tranquility. Take care. We'll see you next time. Investigate all this new music, but don't forget the favorites. Don't forget the classics. Take care. Bye-bye.